The journey begins with a short introduction of the company, a small organization with a long history. It continues outlining the reasons led to the birth of BMO, the reasons that triggered the need of such a department within the organization. We introduce ourselves and outline further the type of our BMO and its positioning within the Dutch Lottery. The journey concludes with the next level PMO, our next steps and ambition for the upcoming years. We are Nederlandse Loterij, the largest games of chance supplier in the Netherlands. Every day we excite many players with nice cash prizes, but we invest a major part of our revenues in Dutch society as well. That's how we contribute to a happy, healthy and sporty Netherlands. Not surprisingly, we say a full win for the Netherlands. The Dutch state founded the Generaliteitsloterij. The grand prize was 30,000 guilders, in those days a huge amount. Years later the name was changed into Nederlandse Staatsloterij. More and more people could afford buying a lottery ticket. The Nationale Toto was founded by and to the benefit of sporting clubs, enabling them to get a share of the benefits. When introducing Lotto, the live draws on TV attracted mass audiences. Likewise, the major TV shows around the Staatsloterij were watched by many millions. During the years, new innovative games of chance were added, such as the daily draws of Lucky Day or the introduction of Crosslaute. That was an instant success. Each Saturday, Miljoenen Spel excited many players, if not Euro Jackpot, with the largest jackpot in the Netherlands of up to 90 million euro. Today, several Staatsloterij draws are true events such as the draw on King's Day or the one on New Year's Eve. And yes, many people fell in love with the mascot, Freckle. <laughs> Nederlandse Loterij is a genuine Dutch supplier of attractive and responsible games of chance. We execute a strict policy protecting consumers and preventing addiction, fraud and criminal behavior. We can only do so with a regulated and attractive games offer. An organization that attracts with its games of chance no less than 8 million active players, 2.7 million of them online or subscription-based. Each year, we pay out hundreds of millions in prizes, and a major part of our revenues goes to Dutch society. A fair share has Dutch sport as its destination. Through the NOC NSF Foundation, more than 80 national sports associations benefit from the annual remittance. This is great for young and old for recreational as well as disabled sports, for Olympians and para-Olympians too. We reward initiatives in the areas of health and physical activity too. And also, we support 18 good causes related to health, physical activity and well-being with millions. In fact, through our annual remittance to the Ministry of Finance, the whole Dutch society gets a share of our revenues. We want all of the Netherlands to win. Therefore, our whole organization is characterized by a winner's mentality. We go for it, in an open market with changing rules. That's where our chances are. And that's where we must grab the opportunities, through smart innovations, by closely collaborating with thousands of retailers in the Netherlands. Together, we explain the importance of responsible gaming. We believe in the power of working together, driven by results, with passion, transparency and entrepreneurship, the acronym of sports in the Dutch language. This is how we contribute to a happy, healthy and sporty Netherlands. Nederlandse Loterij, a full win for the Netherlands. Through this video, you have got introduced to our fantastic company. Within this company, there has been a need introducing a PMO. But what was really the trigger for such a need? 
2018 has been a landmark moment regarding projects within the organization. KPMG has got the assignment to evaluate the life cycle of a project within the organization. The reasoning behind had to do mainly with two facts. The organization had undertaken a heavy merger process and top management wanted to check what was the influence as such on the project execution domain. The second reason has to do with a high degree of Netherlands and Lotterai exposure if things do not go the way they should. Everything needs to be executed with a low risk appetite and with zero quality compromise. Going back to the KPMG report, the top observations are summarized as such. The company has been operating in a rather organic project environment, mainly deriving from the fact that the two predecessor companies had different ways of working with projects and programs. So after the merger, the company had been lacking a focal point of project portfolio management with strong governance principles. Projects didn't have always a clear start and date, neither always based on a business case outlining the value generation for the organization. External stakeholders management, mainly referring to supplier, has not been optimum in many cases, creating unfortunate situations. All in all, a vague end-to-end -end responsibility frequently leading to the triangle violation of scope, time and quality. KPMG's suggestion was clear and abstract. Create project framework supported by professionals, supported by appropriate tools and techniques. And that led to the birth of PMO. The norm was set. The organization needs to do the right projects as best fit to its strategy, at the right time prioritized. Doing the projects right, driven by efficiency principles like, for example, optimum resources allocation, has been also part of the norm. I have been requested to take the lead on that journey, and that was a nice challenge for me. At the same time, that felt as double responsibility. I had to make it happen, and then in a sustainable way, so that the whole endeavor could run even without the leader on board. PMO is a department with vision and mission. Clarity and preciseness have been my drivers. Organizational fit scores high in priority. Vision of PMO. Be a sustainable center of excellence that contributes to strategic benefits realization via successful projects in a dynamically changing environment and organization. Mission of PMO. Bring all disciplines, people, processes, principles together in a professional, structured and pragmatic way with the minimum viable bureaucracy and high level of agility. I always refer to PMO as the binding force with a blended flavor. It is a PMO with clear hierarchical positioning reporting to the chief digital officer who reports to the CEO directly. That gives PMO a clear mandate and positioning within the organization. Projects, programs and portfolios are embracing the organization's strategy, from standards to templates and from tools to resources allocation. PMO has started as a supportive one, but soon after its introduction has evolved to a controlling one by setting up all necessary frameworks and templates and make them available to stakeholders. As soon as the team was completed, the directive aspect started also taking shape. PMO has established steps in becoming an enterprise PMO, executing strategy, and our ambition is to evolve further this aspect the upcoming years. People do projects. This has been my lessons learned from the last 16 years active in the project management world. That was my driver selecting my PMO team. I still remember my discussion with our CEO saying, keep it simple, approachable and value added. Do not underestimate the organizational fit. 
I hired six new people. My team is a dream team. Suitable, multicultural, and connected to the company's core values, compiling the world sport. A strong combination of hard and soft skills, from solution-oriented to storytellers, from project management certified to passionate with delivering value, from observers to open-minded, from result-oriented to reliable and respectful, from technical knowledgeable to transparent. I'm a great supporter of servant and adaptive leadership. I trust the experts and I believe in the mix and match of skills and mindsets. This has been my life and business style and this is the way I set up PMO. I created the PMO framework supported by templates, reference guides, the do's and don'ts based on previous experience and company legacy, the lessons learned and tools. My team has got the freedom subsequently to operate within this framework and make themselves sign via their project realization. By the section best practices later on, I give more content on how this has been realized in practice. Continuous improvement is vital. From Darwin say about the importance of the adaptability to change a survival factor to the latest project management world journal survey where the factor of continuous improvement has been with 66%, the highest rating factor in challenges within the sustainability phase of a PMO. We listen to it, we follow the trends and we plan ahead. We may be proud of our journey up to now. Introduced in April 2019 to fully resourced by August 2019, and established operating up to December same year. Just before closing 2019, PMO celebrated a green audit report on PMO's setup and built out phase that we are very proud of. The new year has begun with PMO trying to embrace the whole business roadmap and combine it with a project roadmap. We are part of the digital transformation the company currently undertakes and we are named the product owner of the quarterly business refinement event. Mid-2020, we aim to have the so-named QBR event running by PMO, helping us to evolve to a more lean and strategic department. Looking towards the end of 2020, I would like to be able to measure the value generation of PMO via lessons learned workshops, refinement sessions with key stakeholders, but also documented data-driven decisions that can be shared with the rest of the organization. That would be a good start towards project benefits management that can evolve the upcoming years. Although I prefer to stay focused by planning short term, I cannot hide my ambition for the PMO's future. We are here to stay and establish our presence through plans and actions. In my PMO backlog, the optimization of portfolio management occupies one of the top positions. Resource management is also an aspect that has certainly room for improvement towards a more holistic approach within the organization. Last but not least, PMO people. We aim to evolve from project managers to project leaders from people managing teams to people leading self-organizing teams. This is a difficult journey already started by various leadership trainings of the PMO members with the ambition to develop as the time progresses. In three years time, I envision PMO to be referred as the center of excellence within the organization, the focal point for projects, programs and portfolios but also the learning center of an agile, self-organizing company. Our PMO is customer-centric and oriented. We want happy customers that always come back to us. As I always say, we do not do projects for ourselves, we do projects for our stakeholders. In fact, 
PMO does not consider itself as project executor, but it goes beyond that. Business enabler and supporter, solutions provider, and a partner for the rest of the departments that think with them instead of thinking for them. The PMO team, consisting of five project managers, one coordinator and myself, focuses on five basic principles. Develop and maintain long-term relationships, understand the client, manage and meet expectations, share knowledge with one another, deliver value for money. PMO is responsible end-to-end. -end. It gathers the complex business ideas and it leads them through the established evaluation process. The ones that get forward are being prioritized based on cross-organizational accepted criteria like strategy fit and technical complexity. The prioritized projects are grouped in strategic programs to maximize efficiency in realization and subsequently they get categorized in portfolios realizing specific strategic objectives. The life cycle concludes with the actual implementation and handover to the business and operation. In that way, PMO keeps a holistic overview of the complex initiatives within the organization that might lead to a strategic project, plus the overview of the running programs and projects themselves. Project Portfolio Board is an organ set up by PMO. As head of PMO, I have the responsibility of facilitating the meeting and make sure for its responsiveness and efficiency. This is a recurrent every three weeks meeting. The participants are the Manager of Strategy, the Technology Director, the DevOps Manager, Business Control and an Enterprise Architecture Specialist. Those are the permanent members and of course we have the so named guest members coming from the business the idea generators as we call them. They are invited upon need based on the idea Project Portfolio Board needs to handle. The variety of roles ensures the proper diversity in realizing its goals. What does Project Portfolio Board? It is responsible to drive the process from a complex idea to project prioritization. It allocates and reallocates resources based on portfolio's needs and executed benefits at a specific point of time. It takes care of the cross-conflicts between running programs. It discusses periodically the IT and project portfolio alignment. Last but not least, it serves as advisory board towards top management. How Project Portfolio Board does it? Project Portfolio Board assigns core teams that refine the ideas. The business model canvases evolve to a set of documents like pre-business case, project start architecture, and a light project initiation document. These documents are being used further for the prioritization of the ideas. The running projects and programs are being monitored and assisted in cross challenges based on information that PMO brings to Project Portfolio Board. Why a project portfolio board is needed by the organization and what aims to achieve? It validates project's business value. It validates financial impact. It ensures technical fit to the existing IT landscape and it validates implementation feasibility. All those together enable top management to make concrete decisions regarding priorities and execution when and if needed. Every project is unique, but all projects have one thing in common, demanding stakeholders and customers with great expectations. PMO always start with a thorough stakeholders analysis based on the interest and influence aspects. We continue further identifying the level of uncertainty within the project. We analyze our key subcontractors way of working. Our findings drive the chosen methodology. Waterfall, Agile, or a blended mix, the so-named hybrid approach. 
Based on the chosen approach, we go further defining the governance of the project, the teams and the way of working. Because of the strategic necessity of all our projects within programs, there is always a steering committee per program overseeing it. We report progress, validate decisions, escalate issues, but mainly get sponsorship support by the relevant steering committee. As previously said, PMO does not do projects for itself. The way we organize and realize projects need to meet the addressed organization's results expectations. Let's see together which are those and how PMO addresses them. Projects are organized in programs related to strategy. PMO, in cooperation with a strategy manager, has created a nice overview of all the running programs linked to the organization's strategic objectives. Here is a nice graphical representation. One of the company's strategic objectives refers to faultless execution. PMO makes sure that the proper people are engaged with skills relevant to the needs of each program. PMO engages further the audit and risk department of the organization that organizes pre-implementation audit audits per program milestone. Another expectation lies into the area of clear decision-making and prioritization. PMO has an answer there as well. Well-established project portfolio board, project framework, and simply to follow processes in place. The digital transformation that the company currently undertakes demands flexibility in all areas. That creates an extra challenge for PMO that needs to be remained and seen as structured as well. PMO addresses this challenge by adhering all possible project management methods. PMO should be certainly perceived as a delivery center within the company. The delivery center of projects based on three principles. There is no one fit size for all. Every project is unique and as such should be approached. We do not work for the tools and techniques, instead we make them work for us. We adhere the minimum viable bureaucracy by using the provided technology to make our project life easier. Project management constantly evolves and we do the same. Our best practices follow the methods written in books but do not forget to incorporate organization sensitivity. We document project requirements. We use project briefs to get stakeholders buy-in. We establish clear project plan. We mind teams' workload. We clarify roles and responsibilities. We communicate, we communicate early and often. We document changes and lessons learned. PMO tries to organize projects in programs for obvious reasons. PMO runs programs on a waterfall approach. The main reason is the big complexity requiring strict governance, monitoring and controlling. Another reason is the top management expectations regarding frequent visibility and involvement via the steering committees. The projects within the programs have the freedom to run in the most suitable way. The software-related projects and the front-end development ones are run, for example, in agile ways, mainly Scrum. The setup teams within these projects use certified product owners that run the daily activities organized in backlogs and sprint cycles. The project manager in those cases focuses on the overall planning and arranging activities outside development like contracts, financial processes and trainings. It also includes the overall monitoring and controlling of the, of the project. Those projects work with their own Kanban boards and the program manager is responsible of creating the overall program Kanban board. PMO encourages and promotes the Scrum values within the team, no matter the methodology they adhere for implementation. Further, 
PMO enhances its waterfall cycle with two basic principles from Berlin, eliminate waste and always learning. The third added principle is inspired by Six Sigma, always improve. I am very proud having introduced the Thinking Portfolio tool within PMO. Thinking Portfolio is a project management tool that gives PMO the ability to keep track and records of the whole life cycle. From idea generation towards ideas prioritization based on feasibility versus value. From projects overview monitored on agreed KPIs towards the dependency wheel depicting the dependencies between them. The risk trend of the project is initially captured by the shown name spider risk analysis showing the risk trend of the project in various domains relevant to it. PMO uses the JIRA tool for project teams executing their activities in agile methodologies. From creating a Kanban board towards a velocity graph of the issues occurred at the time, towards a pie chart outlining the status of the project, including test activities. PMO has its own SharePoint page in our company's intranet. In that page, we introduce ourselves and what we do and want to achieve, but we also provide practical information like free webinars available project management articles on various themes and access to Thinking Portfolio tool and documentation. We also have a separate column for the Project Portfolio Board where we outline the meetings planning roster and the minutes of meeting per case accessible by the rest of the organization. PMO values transparency and proves it at any chance given. PMO runs international projects. Our subcontractors are located all over the world. Communication is vital and we support it by all available virtual tools. We use video calls but also chat tools on a daily basis. In that way, not only we create an active project community, but we have fun as well. Our PMO approach towards continuous improved services starts with collecting feedback through retrospectives and lessons learned workshops. We gather all key stakeholders physically together and we discuss. In that way, we improve our working methods, but also we identify new opportunities that we introduce in a small scale first by the next project endeavor. We follow the market trends. We attend local and international conferences and events but we also attend virtual webinars on a weekly basis. That gives us the opportunity to stay connected with the project management community and exchange views and insights with other professionals in our domain. We study the new frameworks and methodologies and try to adhere them. Last but not least, we investigate possibilities for our tools enhancements and collaborations. For example, we are at the moment in an investigation phase of integrating our thinking portfolio with JIRA for better alignment and monitoring, and we plan also to introduce the JIRA portfolio module that will help us aligning the different projects Kanban boards. My PMO people is my asset. I motivate and urge them to take training courses in every relevant field. From leadership courses to more hard skill trainings relevant to agile techniques and roles in an agile environment. Every year we compile together a roadmap of PMO goals including our personal development. In that way we become better and we deliver better services to our customers. Cultivating the ground to create an engaged project management community within an organization takes time. It takes time because it has mainly to do with factors like maturity absorption and resistance to the new and unknown. Our PMO faced the same challenge. 
PMO has taken various steps in multiple ways and this is still seen as work in progress. We started as part of the Data Heroes Market Day. This was a previous year initiative within the company with the aim to show the work that is being done in a more informal and digestible way. PMO team was then newly introduced, consisting mainly of two people, but that was not an excuse not to be part of this endeavor and showcase ourselves and our intentions. PMO outlined in a humoristic way what project management is, the value that can add to the organization, and the various tools and techniques that uses to achieve its goals. And because the power of learning lies in repeating and repeating again, soon after the PMO's final setup and establishment, we introduced the so named PMO Roadshows. PMO team created a presentation we called Project Management for Non Project Managers, and we organized workshops with all the departments of the organization to showcase our team, our work, and what we can do and mean for them what they can expect from us and what we might ask from them in a simplistic but straightforward way. Those sessions were very good embraced by the organization and we received a lot of positive comments but also questions, tips and suggestions. PMO team has its own learning and engaging moments as well. We have a monthly PMO lunch where we gather and share experiences challenges and lessons learned. We celebrate successes further and we stand also by our points to improve. We have our team building activities moments where we combine our passion for creating high performing teams with fun. We give compliments each other. We also make commitments and we create and maintain our own backlog. Can PMO be a value enabler? I will quote something I read recently and inspired me. When they ask me what PMO means, I say PMO means whatever the customer needs it to mean. The names we choose are not as important as the value we add or the way we go the extra mile to influence and change how people see the PMO function. It is our actions and not our name that gets us a seat at the strategy table. During our roadshows, we have been asking people what comes to their mind thinking of Netherlands and Lotterai PMO. Here are some answers we got. I have been always believing that the best advertisement is what the stakeholders and customers say about you and the value you create through your work. We approach some of them with a question. What is the value that PMO generates for the organization? Here is what they have said. as NLO defined five strategic programs to become future-proof. These five programs have a huge impact on this company, so the PMO is making sure that we deliver those programs on time to become future-proof. The value I see from the project management office is the structure and organization they provide. I joined the organization seven months ago and walking in here as a new person, I could find my way, I could navigate myself through the stakeholders with their guidance. Before the PMO has been installed, there was a little view on uh, the performance of uh, all strategic uh, programs and after the PMO uh, has been installed there's more uh, got more information about uh, the budget about the timelines about the quality of all programs it's it's great added value to have a project manager assigned to your project because he or she helps me to get access to all relevant stakeholders within NLO and they in turn help me to get the quality in the agreement that we need
PMO office of uh, NLO uh, enables me to uh, let me focus more on my work whilst there's a project. Without a project manager, I would be uh, totally lost. I think we, nothing would be on time, not in budget, and uh, definitely not with the quality I uh, desire. I think uh, the PMO really helps us uh, on delivering those. On behalf of Netherlands Lotterij PMO team, I would like to thank you for your time and attention.